we are going to walk through importing a PVS VDisk from VMware to Zen Server. And this is based on the VMware to Zen Server migration guide available in Zen Server TechZoom. There are two common methods for managing golden images for a PVS provision catalog. And based on the method you're using, there are slight variations in the process. In place updates is where you place the VDisk into private mode when making updates. Out of band is where you manage a golden image and create a new VDisk after every update. We're gonna walk through the in place updates method and it's a seven step process. From a high level, the steps are import the VDisk using the Zen Center import wizard, run console commands to ensure optimal VM performance, install the Zen server VM tools, create a VDisk by running the PVS imaging wizard, create a hosting connection for Zen server, create a machine catalog and create a delivery group. So for step one, we will import the VDisk using the Zen Center import wizard. Here in my VMware environment is a PVS client machine that I'm using as a Citrix VDA and flipping to the console of my PVS client. Here we can see the virtual disk status and that is booting from the Win10 disk to VHDX file. Now over to my Zen Center, I'll import my PVS VDisk using the Zen Center import wizard by right clicking on my host and selecting import. I'll click browse and select my Win10 disk to VHDX file and click next. Give it a name and configure the CPU and memory and click next. You should keep the same settings that you had for the virtual machine in VMware. Here you can choose the resource pool or standalone server. I only have one server, so I'll click next. The permissions check is good, so I'll click next. Here you can pick your storage repository. I only have one SR, so I'll click next. And here you can select your networking. I only have one network, so I'll click next. And I'll select UEFI boot because that's what I had for my VM in VMware and click next. For modern Windows operating systems, we don't need operating system fix up. So select don't use and select next. I'll uncheck start the new VM automatically because we need to make a quick tweak before it starts and click finish. Now on the bottom left of Zen Center, we can see the progress bar of our import. So I'll fast forward to where our import has completed and we can now see our newly imported VM. Now on to step two, we will run two console commands required for newly imported VMs to ensure optimal performance. So on the general tab of the VM, I will copy the UUID and I'll click on my host and go to the console tab and run these two commands to set the platform device ID to 0002 and the has vendor device flag to false. Both of these commands are in the migration guide. Now for step three, we will install the Zen server VM tools. So I will start the virtual machine and log into the VM and navigate to zenserver.com forward slash downloads and download the Zen server VM tools. Kick off the install for the Zen server VM tools, accept the default options and restart the VM once the installation is complete. Now for step four, we will create the VDisk. So once the VM has restarted, we'll log back into our VM and launch the Citrix provisioning imaging wizard, which you can find in the start menu. Click next and enter the IP address of your PBS server. Click next and for my scenario, I'll go with the default option of create a VDisk and click next. Enter a name for the target device name and click next. Enter a name for the VDisk and pick the PVS store and click next. I'll choose none for Microsoft volume licensing, but you can choose here whatever works for you and click next. Make sure image entire boot disk is selected and click next. Select do not optimize the hard disk again and click next. So the process is ready to start, so I'll click create. Once that is finished, I'll click continue and click no to have the VM shut down instead of restarting so I can configure the boot order. Once the VM is shut down, I'll go into the properties of my VM and change the boot order to only boot from the network. Then I will start the virtual machine and the imaging wizard continues its process. Once that is complete, click done. 
and shut down the VM. And now I'll convert the VM to a template. And this warning is saying that it can't be undone, so I'll click Convert. And now I'll go to the PVS console on my PVS server and go to the VDisk pool and go to the properties of my VDisk and change the access mode to standard. Now for step five, we'll create the Zen server hosting connection. So over to my web studio of my Citrix virtual apps and desktops environment, I'll click hosting and then add connection set the connection type to Zen server and enter the IP address of your pool coordinator and give it a connection name. Click next and the default option of shared storage works for me. So I'll click next. And then here's where you can specify the storage. I only have one shared storage repository, so I'll click next. I have a network called PVS that I'm using for my PVS target VMs. So I'll select that and click next and then click finish. Now for step six, we'll create the machine catalog. So back to the Citrix provisioning console on my PVS server, I'll right click on my site and select Citrix virtual apps and desktop setup wizard and click next. Here I have my DDC address already populated, so I'll click next. I'll enter my Zen server credentials here and click next. Here I can pick the virtual machine template from the VHDX file we imported from VMware and click next. I'll select the PVS network and click next and then select my VDisk and click next. Here I'm going to create a new machine catalog. I'll give it a name and click next. Single session OS works for me, so I'll click next and I'll select next for the default pooled random option. Here I can configure the VM resources and specify how many virtual machines to provision. I'll go with the default and click next. I'll pick create new accounts and click next. And I'll pick the OU I wanna put my computer accounts in and set the naming scheme and click next and finish. And now the wizard is creating the machine catalog and provisioning the VM. Now back in Web Studio, we can see that the machine catalog was created and we can see the VDA was provisioned with our naming scheme. So now for step seven, we'll create the delivery group. So I'll go to the delivery groups tab, click create delivery group. It only has one machine available, the one machine that we provisioned. So I'll select that and click next. The default user option works for me and I'm not publishing any applications. I'll click add for the desktops and give it a name. This is what will appear in Citrix workspace and click okay. I'm not using app protection, so I'll click next and use the default for local host cache and click next. And then enter a delivery group name and select finish. Now I'll flip over to the console of a VM where I have Citrix workspace installed and logged in. And on the desktops tab, we can see the PVS desktop that I published and I'll go ahead and launch the desktop. So now the Citrix virtual desktop is launching and logging me in. And now I'll go to the properties of the VDisk where we can see that the Citrix virtual desktop is launched from the VDisk that we created from the imaging wizard of the VHDX file that we imported from VMware. So that's it. That's how easy it is to migrate a PVS VDisk that you're currently using for provisioning Citrix VDAs from VMware to Zen server. To learn more, check out the VMware to Zen Server Migration Guide in Zen Server Tech Zone.